We are recording now. Good morning, Mrs. Leakin. I um, have posted the union re-entry plan on um, a variety of different um, avenues through our Blackboard message and our webpage, along with Mrs. Betts posting the Franklin Schools uh, re-entry plan. I know many of you have had a chance to read over those and had a week to kind of think through some questions and so forth. So this meeting is really for you and to ask any questions that you might have regarding specific things throughout the day and or the new developments with um, the email that was sent yesterday with the visual uh, virtual um, learning option um, that Dr. Warland um, was able to send out and Mrs. Betts yesterday. So we have um, new information since last week and that might bring on some different questions. And um, I want this to be um, helpful for you and, and, and know that we can't keep COVID out of the schools. Our best um, is to mitigate um, that and um, keep all our staff and our students safe. So we feel like we have a plan to do that. Um, and we are so excited to see the kids. Um, it marches a long time not to have our Ramblers back at the U. So. Um, I'm going to open it up with any specific questions that you have first, and then we can dive into anything in the re-entry plan that you have questions about. Anything burning right now? You can either put it in the comments or unmute yourself and ask any questions. I know some of the teachers that are on here are also parents, so feel free to ask any questions. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and kind of um, touch base on some of the things on our union re-entry plan. Um, and I'll go in the same order that the re-entry plan was sent out to you. Um, regarding our counseling service, we know that that'll be very important for our kids coming back. Um, some of our families, they don't have siblings, so that adjustment being kind to classmates and um, that social piece will be really important for our counselor. Um, Ms. Cook does ch share between two schools, so she will always be keeping track of um, her um, classroom visits and um, the students that she meets with. So we know that the counseling piece will be very important, um, returning back to school with the lessons that she'll deliver in the classroom, and then also um, with her meeting individually with kids that are really struggling being in school and not being with their parents every day, all day, coming out of summer. Um, so we'll have some of those um, normal tiers at the beginning of school, but we might have additional tiers and adjustment periods um, that we know that Ms. Cook will definitely help us with. I'm actually also going to move her um, up to a classroom so she has more space to space out and have those small groups. Um, so she's not so tight in that little tiny office that's right beside um, mine. Um, in that main office. So I think those things will help her um, deliver some of that counseling piece that'll be really important. Um, the ECA and clubs, we, we do not ever, over the last three years, we did not have any scheduled before October. Um, Spell Bowl was always our first club anyway, one of our ECA clubs. So we'll revisit that in October, but if something comes up, it will be a Franklin School staff um, delivering those clubs and those opportunities. Um, and not any outside um, staff member or outside volunteers. Mrs. Smith, this is Dr. Clendenning. I just want to add uh, one thing about ECAs. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for letting us uh, join. The central office team is all kind of watching in, and they help put the district plan together. On the ECA side of life, we're, we're asking that if a kid is going to participate in extracurricular activities, they need to attend in-school uh, academics. Um, people have asked about that and said, okay, well, why is that? Well, we feel the best way to learn is to be with us. Um, we have great teachers, great administrators, um, and we want to make sure that we're providing that safe environment for everybody. So that's why the reentry plans are out now to give mom and dad, you guys are the best decision makers for your families. Um, but if, if the concern is about the virus and we completely understand that and, and maybe that if you want to do some things a little more cautiously than, than jump right back into school, we're just seeing that separation of ECAs uh, as another thing that kind of helps you. Uh, and, and there's a clear line so the people aren't like wondering what's going to happen. So I want to make sure everybody understood that as we talk about virtual school here coming up. But in order to participate, and that's a K-12 thing. That's not just a union. That's a K-12. So thanks, everyone. 
Great. Thank you, Dr. C. And the next part of our reentry plan is the learning environment. And like many of you have seen on the news and heard, it will look very different. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had the teachers go in and clear out their classrooms of extra things to provide more space for our desks. So um, Dr. Dr. Potter, oh, he would love that. Mr. Potter um, has been working really hard with Ms. Uh, Terrell and spacing out those desks and all facing forward. Um, so that was one um, recommendation that was important um, through the guidance. And so Mr. Sewell has helped with that. Um, they definitely look different. They're all facing forward. And I believe at Union, we're four feet um, away um, surrounding that desk so the kids have their space. So we were able to um, make sure that that um, to stay within some of those guidelines with that learning environment. Um, of course, our routines will be set early. Our routines will look, of course, a little different this year, explaining when we're using masks and when we're not, um, when we will be transitioning in hallways. We always have a um, definitely a routine type um, couple of weeks for kids just to learn those. Um, that will look a little different this year, but we will make sure the kids know uh, for safety. When we go out to recess, we'll use hand sanitizer. When we come back in, we'll use hand sanitizer. And we weren't used to that. Um, maybe some of those things going into the classroom, we'll use hand sanitizer and coming out. So some of those routines within the learning environment, we will be adding um, just for everyone's um, safety. So the teachers, um, will help with that and they've been part of this reentry plan and helping through um, make it so we were all safe so the next part is the master schedule we'll we will stick to our master schedule for the most part um, of course transitions are going to be a little longer because because of the amount of kids in the restrooms and and in the hallways and spacing kids out so we know that and we know that the lunchtime schedule will be a little bit different to allow for more time for cleaning so other than that, the master schedule is about the same. Our specials are still in the afternoon and we'll have our web teachers coming um, in the afternoon for those specials. Mrs. Leakin's on here, um, but also we will have um, two other, Mrs. Brown and Mr. Um, Hartman will be coming with her and um, we'll have our specials in the afternoon like many years before. Recess, we will use um, just two classrooms per recess time, um, no more than two, and we'll have zoned areas to kind of spread out the kids. That will help, so we'll keep some kids on the um, um, basketball courts um, and in different areas within the playground, so they're not all on the dome at one time. Um, we don't want um, 30 kids or um, 40 kids all in one area, so we'll teach them, and that'll be part of our routines about how we're zoning that recess time. And our resources, the kids will all be assigned their own Chromebook this year. Um, that is to, um, one, help with that cross-contamination with other kids using that. And that will be something new for the kids. So they'll be assigned a Chromebook, and that will be theirs all year long. They'll be responsible for charging it at night and taking it home every night. Um, that is new. And the kids will, um, that will be a new responsibility. And I think that they'll think that's pretty cool. Um, we will. Um, make sure that we get that part of the routine that they're getting that in their backpack and that they're charging those at night um, that will help with the cleanliness of their specific chromebook and before we were trading nothing was assigned they plug them in and, and and other kids would be using them so that will be important especially if by chance we would have to close the school at any certain juncture they would have everything that they needed at home you might have noticed also on the supply list, the teachers after conversation, we put a little thing at the top of our supply list, K4, the things to have at home just in case, because kids didn't have scissors and different things that they needed when we went, um, because not everyone had grabbed their toolbox. So that Chromebook will be an important piece for that learning to continue. Um, we didn't miss a beat at Union transitioning to that at home learning. It was different, but the kids continued to learn and grow. And that'll be um, a great piece with that Chromebook. I know Mr. Sprout's been working on um, making sure that that's happening, um, getting some of them traded back in. I know even this week. So we will um, get updates about that. I think we also are trying to get kindergarten all, so all a touch screen. Um, Mr. Sproul and his team made that happen because our little fine motors um, skills with our kindergartners, um, Ms. Clark 
can share was very hard. Um, so that was something important for our little people to be able to use that, use the touch screen during their learning. And that's true. Um, the kindergarten and first grade will both have touch screens. Um, first grade is being uh, funded through textbook rental and first grade we're moving some Chromebooks around um, so that they also have touch screens. So the only group that will not have touch screens at this point and that will change next year is second Great. grade. Thank you, Mr. Sprout. The next part I have in the reentry plan um, that's similar to all elementaries as well is the small group instruction. And we know how powerful small group instruction is and we need it when we're teaching reading and math and um, doing um, some reteaching for kids that need it. So we will um, be able to do that small group, but it will look a little different. So if you would like to prepare your kiddos and notice that in the reentry plan, that when they are in that small group, I know Mr. Sewell has provided um, plexiglass screens um, in case that um, social distancing cannot apply at that horseshoe table that most teachers use. Also teachers and um, kids will be asked to use a mask um, because of that social distancing, but the power of teaching reading and math and, and reteaching and making sure the kids know it is going to be important. And you can't always do that in a whole group because, as you know, when you're differentiating from here to here, um, that we, that small group comes into play to make sure the kids know um, and can move forward. So that is definitely different. Um, and I know it will be new for everyone, teachers, adults, and kids included with that. So that small group is going to be one of the, I'd say, biggest things looking different so far that we've talked about. Um, special education um, services will continue and um, small groups and, and the teachers pushing in and supporting the um, students that need um, that extra support through their IEP. Um, the only thing that's really different with our special education piece is that all case conferences will be um, held over a Google Meet like we are on right now. So um, that will just ensure that we don't have um, additional um, guests in the building and um, they've worked really well since March on Google Meet and we can um, meet all the needs of the IEP through that. So that's something that would be different than other things within that piece. Um, specials and elective classes, another big thing that will look different. Our specials teachers will be going into the classroom to provide that 40 minutes of instructions for our uh, PE, music, and STEM. Um, on nice days, we've talked to the specials teams and they will probably go outside with their kids and provide uh, um, that opportunity outside. Um, but when they can't, they'll be in the classroom. I know Mrs. Leakin has been reading all her research with her um, her music um, groups, and um, there's been a lot of um, news about that, Mrs. Leakin, and about singing and instruments and um, all the particles with that. So she's definitely been on it and reading and, and making sure she knows um, all that research. So we thank you for that. And Mrs. Brown and Mr. Hartman being new to us. Um, Mrs. Brown has been there before, so she's making adjustments with paint brushes and different things that she'll need because the kids still need that, um, those specials and that extracurricular piece um, to their day. So um, that will look different. I think they will go outside as much as possible um, to so they're not always in the classroom, but when they can't, they will be going to them rather than going into the art room and many kids sitting in the same seat at the same table and all the things being spread. So. Um, that looks different. I am going to stop at operations and see if we have any questions so far. You can unmute and ask or put in the chat bar. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Leakin. Yes. She's already thinking about things that she might need, we might need to purchase too. So they have individual things. Um, Mrs. Smith, I just wanted, this is Dr. Clinton again. One thing is to remind everybody that when we wear masks, there's going to be a lot of conversation about that. But on the bus, you, you are going to be required to wear a mask, and Mr. Sewell can talk about that in a second. But outside, we're going to let kids not have to wear masks. We also know that social distancing is going to be reduced. I know you, uh, Katie talked a little bit about being in the zones in the, in the recess, but we realize the kids are not going to stay six feet apart at recess. 
actually, the medical people are telling us, Dr. Mormon's telling us that, you know what, it's okay. That They're going to have to continue to bump into each other and do some of those things. So outside is a good place. So we would encourage the teachers uh, to take their classes outside. If you want to be free of masks, go, go take, go sit someplace outside and do, do school. That is actually a really good way for us to, to ensure that we can be as normal as possible as far as, you know, no mask and being, maybe being a little closer and sitting by my friend, but we are going to have assigned seats. And I don't know if you're going to get to that in a second, but everywhere we go this year, K-12, you're going to have an assigned seat. Uh, and that's going to help the Indiana Department of Health. If someone, uh, when someone does come down with COVID-19, we can circle who went inside that bubble for more than 15 minutes because that's kind of the trigger point right now that, this, that they're telling us. So just wanted just to let everybody know that outside is a good place. Um, we are monitoring and, and Jeff can talk about this, the air quality and some of those things because those are those are big factors we know, especially as we head towards winter time. So great. Thank you. And that reminds me too, we, um, when I met with the teachers one other time after the reentry plan, um, they are all brilliant and great. And they thought, do we have clipboards for every single kid? Because when we're going, because I encourage going outside when we can. Um, and so we made sure um, to put that on our order form. So it's easy to go out and still not miss a beat with instruction and, and doing what they might need. So that was one thing that came out of it. I don't think I mentioned earlier, but every kid will have their own tools. We won't be able to share tools and toolbox type things. We call it a toolbox, school box. It has many different names, um, but with their um, supplies in it. And that that clipboard will be theirs with their name on it in their in their desk. So they won't be sharing that too to be able to go outside and, and learn and um, have that fresh air. So um, moving on to operations, the clinic, um, our school nurse is still um, Mrs. Baker and she is a JMH employee. Um, she'll be with us this year and um she will help monitor um, kids and symptoms. And um, we're looking for a second room. The CDC um, recommended that there is a second room for kids that might fall under some of those um, symptoms to keep them away from other kiddos. Another big thing that was important when I was talking to Mrs. Baker that we um, thought that we keep the playground scratches and bumps and bruises away from the clinic. So between myself and Mrs. McCreary and Mrs. Baker, depending on what that clinic might look like, we'll go to them. They'll ready out and we will come to them with a Band-Aid or an ice pack um, instead of you know, transferring and um, not knowing who might be in the clinic that time. Also, um, in the past, they would come down with a note. They'll, the teachers know now that they'll need to call just to kind of determine if Mrs. Baker's going to them or they're coming to us and all that, the hallway traffic, and just making sure we're keeping everyone as safe as possible. So that's a little different. Um, and we're working on that second room now. But other than that, um, Mrs. Baker should be with us all day, every day. Um, she sometimes has subbed in different schools half day. Um, so you would just see her, her in the morning and afternoon, but they're gonna really try hard to make sure she's there um, all day, every day, just with everything going on um, in the, our new world. So um, be looking for Mrs. Baker, a familiar face there. Um, drop off and pickup procedures will look different and we're still honestly working through those. We know that we can't have the entire building come out for drop um, car rider um, pickup. And um, we're working through how that might look like in the parking lots. Um, but by grade, depending on if you had a kindergarten or a fourth grader, we want to coordinate that. So we're thinking through that. We know we can't have our 50 car riders all out in that yellow square that Mrs. Erickson and I have done for many years um, at dismissal. So we're working through how that looks with just one or two classes at a time for dismissal with car riders. And like Dr. Clendenning had mentioned earlier, and Mr. Sewell might cover um, later, is um, the kids dismissing to the bus also will do by class, but they will need to wear a mask when they're on the bus. Um, and we'll help the kids, um, remind them it's not going to be just, it's not going to be familiar to them. So as, when we're walking the kids out, we'll make sure that they'll already be in the hallway, so they'll have to have it on, but they'll, we will encourage them to get that mask on um, for the bus. The drop-off, we do not 
there's no crowding during drop off because we have such a long drop off time in the morning from 720 to 740. So um, we we don't need to do anything different with that. We only have one or two kids walking in at a time um, and the bus riders will be a little bit different when they're going to the classroom. Um, front office procedures, we have a few um, new things with that. We used to always have fourth graders deliver passes and notes at the end of the day, which was such a fun um, little thing for them to do and ownership piece. Um, they won't be doing that this year. Um, the office staff will be delivering those. And um, we will not be able to have lunch guests and classroom volunteers this year. So that obviously looks very different. We've definitely had a lot of lunch guests in our past and classroom volunteers, but just for the safety of the kids um, and the staff, we will um, take that piece out until we can um, hopefully resume that when um, things change a little bit. So hallway transitions I mentioned earlier, we will use masks in the hallway and we'll use a one-way traffic um, pattern um, when we can and only one classroom in the hallway at a time. Sometimes you would see two or three classrooms, you know, transitioning from the bathroom to going upstairs or to the um, cafeteria. So we will cut that out and have um, traffic patterns for that. Lunch and breakfast. Breakfast will not be any different. We have about 20 kids eat breakfast and 20 kids can fit safely in the cafeteria with spacing. Um, so that doesn't look any different. Um, and then lunch does look different. Um, kindergarten, we can get spaced out in the cafeteria, which will be good because they it's so new to them and there's food everywhere and you know how that is. Um, so we will have little X's and assigned seats for all our kindergartners facing one direction. So if you know the cafeteria, you would um, face towards the I, student IDs. And so all the kids will be facing that way with the social distancing between them and their assigned seat. Um, for one and two, they will be in the gym with um, sit spots and their assigned seat in the gym and that same thing for three, four. It's a bigger area. We're able to spread the kids apart. And I'm working with Jill Overton and um, Mrs. Spicer now um, to determine how those lunch shacks will look and or if the kids bring their lunch. So that does look different. The kids aren't used to eating in there. They love eating in there when we have special treats. So it will be something that might not be so exciting anymore after doing it all year long. So preschool will be eaten in their classroom and won't be part of that um, schedule. Uh, Mrs. Smith, I think on lunches, we're still going to provide hot lunches. Yes, yes. Yeah, Mrs. Yeah. Overton said that they'll at least have something hot in their lunch, like a hot chicken sandwich and it's right. wrapped up. Or yeah. um, she had mentioned that like the burrito and maybe the pizza that they'll wrap up and put in um, the lunch she was talking about. There'll be at least one hot thing she thought in the lunch each day. Yeah, I think the biggest thing and Jeff, you can jump in here. The biggest thing is going to be the kids just aren't going to self-serve. Mm -hmm. They're going to be separated. But but as far as lunches, we still need to provide uh, what what's in school world calls an A lunch uh, because of federal requirements. So it won't be just sandwiches the entire time. Just wanted to make sure that everybody's aware of that. Jeff, do you have anything else to add? I know you've been really working on that subject for us. Uh, no, I mean, everything you've said is correct. We uh, Jill and her team are going to prepackage the meal so that they can be handed off to the students without them going through any kind of lunch line or a queue. And that just allows us to uh, minimize the common touch points and just make sure that lunch uh, process is as safe as possible. Great, thank you. Um, I'll pause here. Do we have any questions? Anyone wanna unmute or do we have any questions, Mrs. McCurry in the chat? No, we don't. Okay, great. Yeah, well, so parents, I know you guys would love to volunteer. I have a way you can do this. It's called <laughs> Apply for a CARES Act assistant. <laughs> we need parents and uh, guardians and people that want to come and help. And the CARES Act is a federal program that Dr. Warland is overseeing. So she can maybe jump in and kind of talk about that. But a union has some spots. I'm not sure if they're all filled yet. But I will tell you that we have 23 or 4 set aside, Dr. Warland. That is correct. Yes, across the district, the eight buildings in the district. 
and we need people to apply for those positions. <laughs> and also substitute teaching. How, who raise your hand if you really want to sub? <laughs> you know, Mrs. Cummings, you you, know, you you can when you work on that that PhD, you can you can come in and sub a little bit. You you have nothing else to do, right? <laughs> Brooke and I feel you. We, we're right there with you. <laughs> but we do need subs uh, this year as well as CARES Act assistance. And on that same vein, Katie, if you don't mind if I jump in with regards to parent engagement, um, I will be hosting this week, week and next opportunities for parents uh, and teachers for the teachers that are on here as well. But to jump in and give some feedback on at home learning in the event the behavior of the virus necessitates our returning to a prolonged uh, virtual learning environment, online learning environment. I want some feedback. So I'm gonna post that information in the comments section so that if you want to pop in, I'll post the dates and times in the link, the links for that as well. So I just wanted to throw that out there when we're, when we're talking about opportunities for our families. So thanks, Katie. Great. And welcome Mrs. Um, Coy and Mrs. Tante. I didn't see you earlier. Thanks for joining us. Um, two more in our re-entry plan I wanna cover and then um, I will let Central Office add anything or um, any questions that you might have about the new virtual learning piece that was sent out um, yesterday. The last two things, um, restrooms and cleaning procedures. We are wanting the kids, of course, to wash their hands with soap and water, um, but we also will have hand sanitizing stations in the classrooms right inside the door um, and in a couple other high traffic areas and to encourage that and how to do that. Um, that's, of course, going to be part of our routines um, in the beginning of the year. And um, we'll also, Mr. Sewell has bought tape for us. So we know kids struggle with spatial boundaries, especially our young ones. So we'll put little lines on the tape so they'll know that distancing between them while they're waiting on the bathroom and or in different some other different scenarios um, so they know. Um, that line is a little easier than knowing um, that spatial area for some of our young kiddos. Actually, some of our old kids need that as well. So that's um, with the restrooms and then we'll follow the school district guidelines on those cleaning those restrooms and how often those are cleaned throughout the day. And the last thing, the water fountains will be closed. And I know that Mr. Sewell had sent me a message saying that the bottle fillers, um, we were going to get two, but how it's equipped in our older building, we're going to have one, but we'll make sure that the kiddos, as you noticed on the supply list, they're um, can bring a water bottle that they can refill when they're at their bathroom time and we'll provide that time as needed. Um, also, Mrs. Erickson and Mrs. Clark have restrooms in their classrooms. They'll use those as much as possible to help with that time out of the classroom because it's going to take a long time um, with that transition and those um, bathroom breaks. So Mrs. Erickson and Mrs. Clark will be able to stay in their classroom because they have those restrooms in their classroom. We'll use those um, for those kiddos as much as possible. Um, Mrs. Erickson was going to move up to the, you know, the big kid wing um, this year with Mrs. Clendenning. Um, but because she has that restroom this year, um, due to COVID, we're going to keep her right where she is so we could use that um, to help stress of that bathroom down by the office. So I that's covers um, pretty much the re-entry plan. As you also noticed, our um, Meet the Teacher does look different. Again, like Dr. C had talked about outside, being outside and that air and the UV rays, we are going to do a tailgating kind of style, um, Meet the Teacher. And we did break that up into um, smaller groups. So um, we'll do that on August 3rd, like originally planned, just it will look a little different. Um, and we'll do five to five forty-five and six to six forty-five. The teachers will be there and um, answering any questions that they can. We'll also do yearbooks and some pickup of supplies that day. They'll have a couple different stations for that, so you'll be able to walk around the parking lot. Um, we'll try to use the horseshoe for the teachers and the parking lot for the cars, so um, safety is also um, in um, being recognized with the meet the teacher. Um, other than that, if a teach, uh, just noticed if a kiddo doesn't have a water bottle or forgot it that day, because we know that always happens. They left it in the car, they left it on the counter. We will have disposable cups for them um, so they can 
have water because if not, I can already see how they could figure out how to put their head under that. Um, so we'll make sure we have um, disposable cups and ready for those kiddos so they aren't dehydrated all day. Other than that, I think some things popped up for resources from Mrs. Warland. Um, I don't see any questions. Um, Katie, I would like to um, address a couple topics related to busing, if I could take a minute for that. Absolutely. We have a lot of bus riders at Union. Fair share yep. of car riders as well. Yep. As uh, Dr. Glenn Denning mentioned earlier, we are, oh, I think you did do too, Katie. We're going we're gonna to wear masks on buses. Uh, we're going to keep the windows at least cracked, depending on the weather, and probably down to kind of make sure there's really good ventilation coming through the buses. And we are going to do uh, the best we can with uh, spacing kids out, and they will be in assigned seats. So um, uh, Dr. Mormon has asked us to limit ourselves to two kiddos per seat, and I don't think that's too much of a problem for the buses that serve Union. So um, that will be good. We are asking uh, families across the corporation, if you are able to bring your, your student to school, that does help us uh, keep uh, the buses a little less crowded and uh, would be a, a great help to us. The other thing we're doing with our buses this year uh, is we are, we are gonna have a one-stop uh, policy. So we will uh, pick up your, your student from one location and we will drop them off at one location this year. Uh, we do have families that uh, have uh, different schedules and have asked us in the past to um, pick up or drop off from various locations on a schedule throughout the week. And as we try to manage contact tracing and so on, we just simply are not going to be able to manage that. So we're going to ask each family to commit to that one pickup location and one uh, drop off location each day. Great. Thank I think you. That's Mr. all I have. Yep. Uh, also, visitors will not be able to ride the bus home with their friends. That's true. Yep. So if you're having a sleepover and you're having a party or whatever, normally, you know, we would have taken the kids to your house for you. Uh, that that can't happen this year, unfortunately. So um, the bu the principals will not be giving out bus passes and those type things. Um, so once again, just to reiterate, if you can pick your children up, that would be the best uh, during this year of trying to mitigate the virus. Mr. Stuhl, do you want to talk about the required places in our district for a mask? And, and mask seems to be a hot topic. You know, it's become very politicized. It's become very, you know, controversial in some places. I will tell you, Dr. Mormon shared with me the other day that uh, in the studies that are starting to come out, uh, that masks are actually moving a little bit higher up on mitigating the virus than actually hand washing, um, that, that it's actually doing uh, the job of just not letting the droplets uh, go out. And so we are going to have some required places for kids. And, and um, I know that Katie has provided masks, and we can talk a little about what how many masks the kids should have. And teachers are being provided masks as well. But uh, Mr. Sewell, do you want to talk about the required places, please? You bet. So uh, at arrival and dismissal and on our buses are, are some of those times as we're coming and going and, and it's uh, those dynamic environments primarily where it's difficult to maintain social distancing. So um, arrival, dismissal, uh, transitions in the hallways and any activity where kids are moving about and, and kind of uh, we can't consistently maintain that uh, social distancing. That's our that's our guideline for that. Um, we do. Um, you know, we do anticipate teachers uh, providing assistance with masks and, and instructing kids on how to use them properly. And and you try to wash your hands before and after you're, you're handling and putting the masks on. Uh, we're going to ask families to help us uh, make sure masks don't get swapped in between students. And so that'll be part of the instruction we do. And we will uh, want to have uh, each mask labeled with the student's name uh, or initials so we can make sure we can positively identify who who the mask each mask belongs to we've gotten a question what do we do if we see johnny and billy uh swapped masks and had a little fun there and i think what we would do in that case is we would get each person their mask back in a baggie and we would give them a, a temporary mask 
uh, to allow them to finish the day. And we'd, we'd kind of maybe remind the parents to maybe launder those masks before they come back to school. I think it's a great idea to have uh, uh, your, your students spend some time in a mask and find one that feels good to them and that they can wear uh, comfortably and to have a, probably a, a backup uh, on hand uh, for your school day. Great, thank you, Mr. Sewell. Um, Union will purchase one um, child size mask. Um, there's definitely a difference between a child size mask and an adult mask. Mm -hmm. um, and it will have, it will, it will be blue with a union, the union logo on it. So that will be important for each kid to get their name or initials inside here. So we don't have a lot of, um, oh, that's mine. No, that's mine. Um, so we'll either do that for you or we'll ask you to do that with a marker inside um, the mask. Um, so the teachers and myself will be that great role model. Um, we will be putting our masks on when we're in the hallway. We will be putting our masks on when we're in a small group. So um, there's definitely all kinds of different options. And like Mr. Sewell said, try to figure out what's comfortable for your kid. Um, as all of you know, you know which one's comfortable for you right now. Um, so just practice that and kind of see how that works. Um, but we will definitely get one mask. And if that's, if you decide to purchase a couple and they just keep this one as backup in their desk at school, that would be fine. Um, and some kids it kind of will depend on, but to always be able to have one in rotation to wash, mm -hmm. um, they're saying to keep these washed. Um, so after a day of kid, um, you know, saliva and drooling and maybe chewing on them, at times, because we'll have to get into the routine of that not being a sanitary thing, um, to be able to be washed. That's why I, I noted that if they had one or two other ones, you could always have one washing and one, one in their desk and maybe one in their book bag. Um, this is another option. I don't know if you guys have seen this. I wanted to get this for the kids just because it's so convenient, but they didn't have, um, they don't have it in child size um, with the company I'm working for, but it's the one that goes around your neck so you can just pull it up and down. Um, and it's just, it's just pretty easy and convenient. If you can find these in kid sizes when you're out and about, it might be something that might be easy for them and they won't lose it. Um, Miss Clark and I noticed something on our good old Facebook page, I think yesterday or the day before the brilliant, um, hack that they used lanyards for the kids to keep it clipped. And then they just put this one up. So if they're using this one, we might look at getting those little lanyards that you clip like almost for your ID. So it's always on you when you need it and you're not looking for it or trying to find it or holding the class up looking in your desk. So um, we'll look into seeing how much those might be, especially for our five and six year olds that lose the red crown that's in their hand. So um that's just a little hack I noticed online that we'll look into, but we're definitely buying a kid size for them. You might want to try this out on your kiddo just because it's always there. Um, just a few options because masks I know are a hot topic. One, one other thing, one other question that I get on masks is whether a face shield will substitute for a mask. So you've seen the face shields that have like a headband and a shield that comes down to the front and then you're, you can kind of see through it. Uh, unfortunately, that is not a direct substitution. Um, the aerosols and droplets in your voice still escape down and out to the side of those. And so when we when I get that question, I have to say, unfortunately, no, we, we are asking you to wear a, a true facial covering, not a not a face shield um, uh, to, to uh, meet that guideline. Um, I, I did forget to uh, uh, mention one thing about our lunch ordering process that's coming. Uh, Mrs. Overton is uh, is working with the company to make that as touchless as possible. So we're minimizing how much uh, um, contact we have with um, making payments and so on. Um, that is going to be kind of right down to the wire getting that in place. But I, we will have an online system where you will be able to reserve um, or make your meal selections for about a week, uh, week or two uh, in advance. Uh, and do that online so that we don't have to um, manage that process uh, in the cafeteria itself. So more information will be coming out on that soon. Great. Dr. Glendinning, Mr. Sprout, Ms. Dr. Yeah, Morland. A couple things. One, uh, we're going to ask parents to help us every day in that kind of pre-screening. Mm -hmm. And we talked about uh, you know, having the the health clinicians and the nurses available, but we're not going to be screening all 5,100 students every day as they walk in the building. We're going to ask mom and dad to do that. So would you see 
uh, your child wake up and, and they're complaining of you know a headache or a cough or a temperature, um, we're just asking, please stay home. We've done away with perfect attendance uh, awards and those type things to support, to, to support you as a parent making a decision. We've also provided grace. You know, if you've been in this with us for a while, you know, a, a absent number seven, you get this nice letter that says, hey, you need to come to school. And uh, at number 10, it's like, hey, we really need you to come to school. And, and then we have someone else come in and help us. Well, this year we're going to relax that a little bit. We'll work individually with, with families, but we need the families to help us. If, you're, if your child is not feeling well, that is okay. Um, you know, we are providing some online options and Dr. Worland is going to talk about that. Well, when would you be considered a virtual learner versus just an at home and maybe doing a Google meet like we've done that before. And, and she can talk about that, but really want to stress with parents the same with teachers, you know, teachers are superheroes in many ways. And one of them is they get up, they're like the post office through rain, sleet, snow. They just get up and go to work. Um, it doesn't matter how they feel. Well, this year we're going to say it does matter how you feel. We cannot have people coming in that's not feeling well. And and Tylenol can't mask it. You know, we don't want you to take that Tylenol and say that's it. Um, the CDC is saying 100.4. We're just saying 100 degrees is a, is a fever. And at that point in time, it is going to be 72 hours fever-free. That's going to be a little bit different also. Now, if, you, if your son or daughter has strep throat, you went to the doctor and you know it's strep throat, yeah, we're, we're understanding that. We're going to be flexible to that. Um, but in the COVID-19 era, you know, we, we're just going to be uh, uber cautious in what we're doing with regards to that. So we're asking mom and dad to please help us. Uh, help us monitor that. Um, and then... Uh, Go ahead, Jeff. We'd like to talk about the HIPAA requirements, and we've gotten some questions about um, whether we will notify other families if, if a positive case occurs in the school. Would you like to talk about that? No, go right ahead. You're okay. okay. <laughs> um, Dr. Mormon has, has said that the health department, um, health liaisons, will be doing the contact tracing, and they will be notifying families who may be affected by a situation where they've had close contact with a positive case. Because of uh, HIPAA privacy requirements, we are not able to share that information with others because it, it violates the medical privacy of, of the person who may be positive. Uh, um, so um, people have been a little bit concerned about that and they've said, well, can we tell the other families? And certainly you, you are in charge of your own medical information and you are able to, to disclose your own medical information to others as you choose to do that. We simply cannot do that. So. Uh, we will not be able to report how many cases are there and was there a case in your particular classroom or so on um, because of those HIPAA re restrictions. But again, the health department will be playing that role and they will be getting that information out to, to families that are affected. Katie, if this is a good time, I might jump in and talk a little bit about virtual learning. Yes, please. And also the August 5th through August 28th um, mm -hmm. period, if you don't mind touching on that and then the virtual. Yes, absolutely. I first want to thank everyone who participated in the survey because parent participation in the survey is what allowed us to make a decision about the design of our virtual environment. And I want to be very clear as I say this, the information that went out this weekend is based upon the current data that we have. As the virus's behavior changes, as things adapt over the course of the next three weeks, as we continue to have conversations with the John Johnson County Health Department, there may be things that change. On Wednesday of this week, you will get an enrollment form as parents asking you between Wednesday and Monday to make a decision about how you plan to enroll your student starting August 5th. Will your student be in a virtual environment to start the year or in the building on site? And that is a choice that as a parent, you are welcome to make. So the data right now, we are we have Franklin Community Schools teachers who will be teaching those grade levels K through six. And really, this is a K, K through four conversation that may change if our numbers grow. So right now, Megan Green will handle our kindergarten and first grade students who are in a virtual environment. 
and Melissa McC McCain right now will do second, third, and fourth. As we get data back, if we find numbers are growing, we may add additional Franklin Community Schools teachers, and we will communicate that as those changes and ad adaptations take place. We will be using our current curriculum, so the students will still be using everyday math. We will be using Wonders, our new ELA curriculum. So those cons consistencies will still be there. Students will still be communicating with their home schools. So your student is currently a union rambler, they will still be a union rambler. So I think it's important to know your student, you as a family will still receive communication from Mrs. Smith and from members of your union family. As Mrs. Smith mentioned, there is a grace period. We understand that there are a lot of unknowns for you and for us, frankly. So between August 5th and August 28th, if you decide you're gonna do virtual, you have that grace period to determine this is working for my family and my student or it's not working for my family. Uh, so we wanna switch back to on-site, no problem. You can also do vice versa. You're on site between August 5th and 28th and decide we are not comfortable. There's a medical reason, whatever it may be. For your family, you're gonna switch to that alternative environment, which means August 28th, there may be some recalibrating. And I think it's important for families to know that based upon what happens with those numbers and where we need to shift staff to accommodate both our on-site learners and our virtual learners. Families can also then make that change at the end of the semester. So if you choose to go virtual for the fall semester and then decide to go on-site for second semester uh, starting in January, no problem there as well. We are not going to allow families to move in and out of environments throughout the semester. If your child becomes ill, we will handle that illness or if someone in the family or for whatever reason your child is out for one day, three days, five days, whatever the case may be, may be your child will remain in the environment they're assigned to. So if you're in um, Mrs. Eric and Mrs. Erickson's class, you'll still remain with Mrs. Erickson and she will handle those absences the way she would traditionally handle those absences from class if you're in that on-site environment. Okay, Mrs. Smith, are there any other questions you've received that I haven't addressed? No, I have, I've received very little um, emails and questions about things. I, I believe some of the re-entry between Franklin schools and some of the meetings have helped answer some of the questions. Um, but uh, uh, come uh, up. And I'll, I'll call you Dr. Smith. That one, Dr. Potter has a friend. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, people have asked us in other reentries, would we close Union if Needham has COVID outbreak? And so I'll, I'll address that. And the answer is going to be no. We're actually going to work to localize that information this time. Um, and it is possible we may only close a classroom in a building. Um, and, and allow everybody else to continue to, to move forward. We will be working with Dr. Mormon um, on all that information. The other thing is we know there's a lot of information out there about COVID-19. People read about it a lot. They're trying to consume as much information as possible. We, we look to one expert, and that is the Johnson County Health Department and Dr. Mormon. All of the other information that can be out and about, it's great. It can provide us uh, information. If someone sends it to us, we'll look at it. We may ask Craig about it. But Dr. Mormon is going to be the one who says yes or no um, to us about what we're going to do, when will we close, when will we not. Betsy Swearingen is another person. It's a key communicator at Johnson County Health Department. And so that team joins our team to make this decision. But we uh, we are going to try to stay in school for 180 days. The state has, has already kind of made it clear that they don't want to see waiver days come into play if they, they, they don't have to. They want kids to, to learn with, with their superstar teachers, and so do we. So we'll, we will look to isolate classrooms, and that's why we're going to have assigned seats and all these different – requirements that we haven't had in the in the past to help us with that isolation and contact tracing. So just want to Thank share that you. bit of information there, Mrs. Smith. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. And on that contact tracing team, that is also in our re-entry plan. You might have noticed that. It will always be myself and Mrs. Baker for sure on that team. And then the classroom teacher. Um, if it, 
I need an additional person, um, and we can always bring someone in, but those are the people for sure to be on that contact tracing team. Um, of course, we'll be in contact with Dr. Mormon on that and um, Mr. Sewell and, and the central office team if that needs to um, be in place. So um, that's in our reentry plan as well. Um, the teacher, classroom teacher knows probably every footstep of the kid more than um, myself, um, but I can put the big picture together sometimes with between the bus, uh, the 720 to the 220. So um, that is also in our plan as well. And if Mrs. Baker by chance is called out to another building, if it by chance happens, then we'll ask Mrs. McCurry or Mrs. Palmer in the office that helps with the clinic and myself um, if we need an additional person to double check um, maybe where that kid had been or that staff member had been throughout the day. Thank you, Mrs. Cummings. Mm -hmm. I did put the supply list in there. It is on the web page. Um, it was um, posted on social media and it was also sent, I believe, in the email with these links on it. Um, we know that you might not find Clorox wipes. We know you might not find some of those things on there and it is okay. We are ordering a lot of things um, to help simplify some of the lists and we will have some of those things and we have alternate plans for that. Um, Thank you and welcome to Franklin. Um, so I think that is all for now. I am doing another one at 530. We might have different questions, different parents. I will record that one as well. It might be the same, the exact same thing, but we're definitely doing that for different parents with um, different um, days and, and positions and jobs. So Thanks lots everyone of work. For attending. Thank you. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Nice to see you.